this branch <laughs> it fell off like a week ago look at this thing fell off whoa well it looks like a perfectly healthy tree sometimes isn't and that's what worries me about that stuff over the house So the goal here over the next uh, couple of days is to get a lot of this downed wood cleared out. We uh, had a couple of big dead trees taken down around the house. I've already cut some of it up. I still have to cut the rest of it up. Um, but in about two to three weeks here, all of these leaves are gonna fall and I'm gonna have to blow everything away from the house. And it's literally like four or five feet deep worth of leaves. Uh, I don't want all of this wood to get buried forever, and it will if I just kind of leave it here. So I have to sort of consolidate it and get it cleaned up before all the leaves cover it up and bury it forever. <laughs> So I'm gonna run this over to a family member's house. I could probably get more on here, but I'm kind of worried about weight. This is real hardwood. It's heavy, not like that wood you guys have on the West Coast. Uh, you know, that puny little feather light stuff. This is some real hardwood. So we have quite a few of these standing dead trees here on the property um, and what I'm doing is it might seem kind of funny as I'm going around and marking them um, the thing is is that most or some of these is fairly obvious that they're 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 standing dead they're not alive anymore but other ones it can be really difficult to tell uh, especially in winter time when there's no leaves on the trees so I figured if I'm gonna mark some of them I might as well mark all of the standing dead ones just so that there's no confusion on anybody's part if anybody else is in here working taking these trees down and that's a very good possibility that that's going to happen in the future
Look at this monster. It's just completely dead. This log here weighs just over a hundred pounds. It's actually a lot heavier than I thought it was. <laughs> so I'm kind of wondering how aggressive we can actually get with this. It's fairly thin now. Um, so what I'm worried about is actually the uh, the apex here sort of folding or rolling over or breaking off. Um, I'd like to thin this out even more, but you know, maybe we'll sort of test it and uh, see what happens first. Ooh, that was like no effort. I bet that one's 120. <laughs> 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 Seems to be holding up okay.
So I think skidding these things up here is definitely the way to go. Um, so I can skid like these big, you know, 10, 12 foot pieces up here and cut them up here, rather than cut them into pieces in the woods and then lift them into the bucket to bring them up here. So I just attach a chain, drag them up here and then cut them in place. And I don't have to lift them. So I guess that, that's it for the day. So every time that I've shown this tractor in a video, I get a bunch of questions about it. What is it? Why do you have it? And if that looks cool, tell me more about it. So this is a 1993 Steiner 420. Um, I actually have two of these things. I have a bee flying around. I have two of these tractors. They're both identical. They were both purchased at the exact same time in 1993 by two family members. One of them was my grandfather, the other was my uncle. I reacquired both of these by indirect means. When my grandfather passed away, it was sort of transferred to me for storage because nobody else in the family had anywhere to store it. It needed some work. Um, over the years, I've stored it and put a bunch of money into it to get it running again. And it's currently at the workshop getting, a, a, or it's currently at the dealer getting a, uh, a tune-up and whatnot. It's got some hoses that need to be replaced and it's getting into pretty much perfect condition. This one was the one that belonged to my uncle. When he passed away it was actually sold to the owners of the house that I recently bought. Uh, when I bought the house nobody wanted to deal with selling the tractor. Uh, it was broken at the time and nobody wanted to deal with it so it just came with the house. These are fantastic tractors. Uh, again, this is a Steiner 420. They made a 430, which was a bigger one. Um, I've spent a lot of time with the 430. I had another family member who owned a 430. Again, spent a bunch of time on it. I'm not super fond of the bigger ones. I like these smaller 420s. Um, the bigger ones are a little bit too big in my opinion. Um, they had some things on them that wasn't engineered as well. It has like a weird foot throttle thing that never worked right and there's a couple other issues with it. But the 420s in my opinion are the best ones. They make all kinds of attachments for these. I have a bucket, a plow, and a mower deck. I don't have any grass to speak of so the only thing that really stays on this is the bucket so that I can haul firewood around and kind of scoop dirt and things like that. They have a blower attachment for this, which Steiner doesn't make anymore. The only way that you can get them is to buy them used. I'm looking for one. I want to buy one, but they don't have them because I could really use a blower for this thing, as you can probably tell. The nice thing about these, I think, is their size. Um, for the size, they're extremely well built. Uh, they're just super, super heavy duty for how big they are. Uh, as a matter of fact, I don't know if you could find a tractor that's built today that's this size that it's built as heavy duty as this one is. I mean, this is this is real steel here. This is not some pot sheet metal stuff. Real steel, it's heavy duty, um, and it can actually do some pretty serious work, believe it or not. It's also great in the winter time with the plow. It pushes snow like nobody's business. This has a ton of pushing power for its size. It's full-time four-wheel drive. There's no engagement or disengagement. Um, it works fantastic. Um, and believe it or not, this one actually has a dual wheel kit for it installed. Steiner doesn't make the dual wheel kit anymore, but you can actually put two more tires or one more tire on each wheel. So you'd have eight wheels total. They made the dual wheel kit for a couple of the other attachments that went with this where you needed some extra stability as well as if you were mowing uh, hills and whatnot. You can mow really steep hills with this. I love these tractors. They sort of have a cult following behind them. And I don't know really how to explain why they have the cult following that they do. 
Um, but if you've ever used one, then I probably won't have to explain it to you. You'll just kind of know. Ooh. Look at that. <laughs>